Hello everyone, it's me Tabo and welcome to another episode. So today I want to talk a little bit about 3JS Editor. Now in front of us, we've got a character that I created and I put all of this together just using code, okay? These are just plain shapes from 3JS that I put together using code. Now for any of you uh, that watched my tutorial, you probably remember this. Now this is the kind of nightmare that you have to experience when you want to draw something or put together something in 3D space just using plain code. So this is what I had to go through in order to put all these pieces together. And you can imagine for me to figure out the positions, I have to try it at least five times so I can place it in the right position, especially when it comes to like minor movement or minor transformations that I want to make in order for it to just be placed exactly where I want it to be. That is a lot of work. And so overall, I would say it is not really worth it. Okay. This was just meant to serve as an example, just to show you that if you wanted to, you could, but the smart way of working is to actually use tools that can help you to create a scene. And then you can just bring it to 3JS and can start animating, adding different materials, playing around with the cool stuff, making it alive. Well, that's what 3JS is all about. It's about making 3D interactive. So if you go to 3JS.org, okay, so now here we are in 3JS. Over here, I'm just gonna enlarge this. Over here, where it says learn, if you click on editor, it will take you to a 3JS editor. Oh, look, what is this? Well, if you guys thought that this is a scene that comes with 3JS, well, you're mistaken. This is something that I created. Now, this is not the greatest scene ever, but it's there to illustrate a point. Now, all of this was put together using this editor, okay? It's quite simplistic for those of you that do not have any 3D knowledge or knowledge of using 3D software like Blender, then this is where you can start. If you just want to put something quite simple together or just altogether want to experiment, then this is the playground that you should come to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to then perhaps open it elsewhere. So now you have a completely new scene. It's quite empty. So you've got your tabs over here. Yes, file. And in here, this is for a new file and you can import any of these files over here. So GLTF, GLB, Day, OBJ, whatever you want. So you can just import something or you can use the already existing geometries that 3JS has to offer. You can edit, clear history center clone. You can add. So now we're gonna start with adding a plane. So there we go, we've got a plane. And over here, you've got a few tabs. This is object geometry material. So this allows you to make changes to the different attributes. So here we've got a plane and we want to rotate it. So you can just come over here and say minus 90. So there we go. If you are familiar with 3D tools, then you should know that W is for transformation. E on your keyboard is for rotate and then R that is for scaling and then using your mouse if you left mouse button click this allows you to rotate around your scene the right mouse button allows you to pan and the mouse wheel allows you to zoom in and out just like you would in a 3d software when you add a plane to your scene it already has a material because that's what a mesh is it is a combination of, an, of geometry and material so you've got your material you can change the color over here well you will not see the color because we're using a mesh standard which requires a light for you to see so we're going to change it to mesh basic and then we're going to change that color oh now we've got red and we've got green and we've got blue so we're going to enlarge our plane give it a color of green so now we've got a field next we can create a box now this box might perhaps be our house. So we're gonna scale it like this, like that. Move it up a bit, rotate, scale it like so. Yes, I think that's satisfactory. So we're gonna also give it a material and we'll make it a Lambert. Not Mesh Lambert, we're gonna use Mesh Basic once again. 
So we're just going to stick to mesh basics because we do not have light as yet. Or rather, just to make things simple, we'll go back to our mesh Lambert and I will make this a beige color. There we go, beige. And so for it to be visible, then I have to add a light. So I will add a directional light and there we go. Now, one thing that I've noticed is that with this light, I'm unable to manipulate its rotation. Why? I don't know, but it doesn't really matter because, well, for this illustration, it doesn't really matter anyway. So I'm going to take the light and I'm going to increase the intensity a bit. So now we can see that our box is gray or beige, whatever. So the next thing that we will add is a, we'll add another box or rather the best thing to do is Instead of creating another box, we can just take this one and we will clone it. I'll clone this one and then I'll just squash it like that. And then I will rotate it like so. It's squashed and it's rotated. And what I will do next is give it a different material. So this is a mesh Lambert. We'll choose another mesh Lambert. Okay, well, if I choose mesh Lambert, then it does not work. So I will say mesh basic. I'll just revert back and say mesh Lambert so that it can give it a new material. There's no new button. So I am not aware if I'm doing this wrong, but this is just how I I've had to do it then we'll just give it some color so there we go so now we've got like a nice little roofing here cheap but it does the job so we just might scale it down like that and we are going to clone it once again clone it and then i will rotate it in the y-axis so it is rotated i'm just gonna move it forward like that so there we go we've got an ugly roof it doesn't really matter. It's cheap anyway, so it doesn't need to be nice. So there we go. So far, we've got a house looking thing, right? So, I mean, I do not have to do all of this, but I just want to illustrate that if you wanted to put something together, you could. So now we're going to come to this. And this is what I created. As you can see, it's a cute little scene. It's a bit ugly, I know, but it doesn't really matter. It does the job. And this was created just using plain 3JS. It doesn't look too great, but this is just an example of what you can achieve. So you can go from that to this. So now when we come back to our code, then this is all we need. And I'm just iterating through the objects and just changing a few things here and there. This is what we have. As you can see, I'm running my server over here and this is what it looks like. You see, simple. Now, it would have taken a lot of effort for me to put all of this together just using pure 3JS. All of these objects over here, these are all basic shapes that I used in order to create this simplistic scene. So for somebody that is learning, I would suggest you do something like this. The editor is quite simple. You can add the different geometries. You can add different lights, camera. They've also got some examples that you can play. I'm not going to play them now. You can go to the site and check them out yourself. So you have a few menus that are very useful, very simplistic, but they get the job done better than using code. So this is what I would suggest to all you newbies. If you're learning through JS and you just want to put a simple scene together, not exporting any scenes, even if you are exporting, if you have some characters, maybe you can just import them into this scene and then basically put your scene together and then take it to 3JS and start coding it. I think this is quite useful in terms of making your workflow faster. And especially if you're still learning, you don't want to frustrate yourself with having to put everything together in code because then you will get a wrong impression that this is what you will be doing because in real projects, you will probably be using some kind of 3D software in order to put your scenes together, or you will be working with a team where you have 3D artists that will prepare everything for you and you will just take those assets and work with them. So this was just me uh, sharing this bit of information. I hope you find it useful, but this is a tool that I think is useful and it's for free. So I think you should use it in order to make your 3JS journey a lot easier. So with all that said, I just wanna say love and peace, I'm out.